This is the Cold Steel Double Agent 2. Just came in. It runs anywhere between $25 to $30. This is their Secure X sheath that it's actively retained into with this uh, pressure pad release system where you have to push down, remove your finger, and then reinsert your finger into there. We're going to modify that just to let you know. It's got the uh, what's called a Gravori double ring handle design. And the blade itself is 3 inch stainless and it's got a clip point here. This uh, looks like it's edged but it's actually not. Uh, it's, it's not sharp enough to cut but it is almost like it's ready to be edged. I could put it on there. It's extremely lightweight. 2.6 ounces to be exact and low profile which makes it excellent actually for a neck knife but just to be honest I don't like having something around my neck so what I'm going to do is also install their small c-clip system which can, this is what the package it came in that will be installed and it'll go on my belt line just for reference this is what I was previously carrying every day for self-defense this is their the kernel blade it's a very good knife it's designed so that it's like very intuitive if you box or punch you know it, it's pointed like a gun so if you're used to presenting a firearm that's how that works yes you can uh, reverse grip it and it will almost basically do the same the way it points it's an excellent knife don't get me wrong but I wanted something on my battle belt and you know I probably would have bought another one of these for the belt my battle belt but you can't find them anywhere really they're hard to find and you know what for the price you can't beat this this was only 25 there's something I want to highlight with these two and that's the width of the grip and deployment of the two surprisingly I actually prefer this grip over this one even though it's thicker even though the tang is is wider and that's simply because of when I have it holstered on my belt and I go to quickly grab it I tend to curl just the first knuckles of each finger right and as I pull out that's just maybe me maybe a training issue but I mean even when I try to get all all up on there it's still got this weird cant as you can see from the video it's not exactly perpendicular with my wrist and the only way to change that is to allow it to fully seat into my palm better like that and now it feels very confident that does not happen with this setup because you're almost forced to go in these grooves with these rings and it just screams confidence and maintaining a positive grip so that's something I just wanted to comment on. Let's talk a little bit about Cold Steel. I also have the Leatherneck SF. This is my first Cold Steel product. Following up with the Cold Steel Trail Boss Axe. I love this axe. This is the only axe I would need in my, my opinion. Kind of a shame uh, that Cold Steel actually got sold out. So this may or may not be you know, my last Cold Steel product to be honest things online showing like the prices skyrocketing you know like as if they're some prestigious <laughs> brand name which is kind of sad to see and unfortunate to see happen to the company because for the longest time Cold Steel was always about you know making value knife valuable knives for a very good cost This is an excellent survival knife, by the way. It is made out of D2 and it's just powder coated, you know, to protect the steel. And I've used it plenty of times, you know, while out in the woods, you know, to baton. It's on the heavy side, but it does have a really great uh, pommel to it. You know, it is full tang. And it does, does come with a very nice high quality sheath. This is why I like all steel, because they don't cost a whole lot, so you don't want to baby them, you know, 
you're not afraid to use them essentially. So let's go ahead and get straight to modifying this. What we're going to do first is kind of just mark where I need to cut. Alright, let's try putting this bad boy in. Very good. Oh, that's so much better. In a self-defense situation, I don't have all that dexterity available to me to bother with this active retention in that regard of pressing it and then pulling out and carefully removing my finger so it doesn't get pinched and then reinserting. With the modification I just did, I can now just go to town. I can just quickly press and still keep my finger pressured down to get in that loop. And there you have it. So with that modification, it's perfect, perfect. So you'll see me install it with the belt clip. I'll demonstrate that here. So there it is on the belt line. I just quickly threw it on there. I might reorient it differently. Right now it's set up for a right hand cross draw, but I can always adjust. I typically carry any, anywhere between two to three knives on me. Uh, currently I am EDCing this guy, which I just got another cheap knife I found on Amazon. And he really surprised me. From Vortec, got a really smooth ball bearing pivot. A nice little liner lock. It's got three and a three quarter inch long blade. Overall length is four and three fourths when it's closed. Overall eight and a half inches. For reference, on all the knives that you see me handle, I wear a large mechanics glove, but my hands are also very skinny, so keep that in mind. So yeah, that's my Vortec. Uh, basically executive clone. In addition to these two knives, I usually also carry the Kershaw Cinder. You know, just a quick knife used to open up small packages or other things like that. You never know when you might need a little knife. In my humble opinion, no knife collection is complete without getting at least a, one more knife. This is uh, a knife that I usually carry just on my hunting pack. And I haven't used it yet, to be honest. I've tested its edge just on paper, but I've heard really good things about it. Uh, it isn't full tang, but for whatever reason, man, they, the way they design the handle, uh, it, it does a really good job from what I hear. But uh, I might do an update video on that if I ever use it for anything. But as of right now, it just resides on my hunting and fishing pack. Out of pure test and novelty, I got this really cheap uh, spring-loaded karambit. It's a Chinese knockoff piece of junk, to be honest. But it's got a really cool stonewashed look. Uh, as I said, it's just a novelty item. Really, it was designed for me just to try out the feel of a karambit, in case I ever get one, a more expensive one. But looking at the practicality, of other knives and stuff. I just don't see a real good use for it. Maybe if you get the uh, the Fox one that opens up as you pull it out of your, out of your pocket. But I just don't like the, the reverse grip on most of these. I'm not into getting close to my opponent just to slash them. It doesn't really extend my reach by very much the way it's angled and the way the slash works. I'd rather have something I can poke and you know fence with to keep away. You know, so I could I want the most reach basically and this is what this accomplishes it allows me to to poke and fence you know just like a boxer would that's why i got the the carnal blade on my battle belt as well it's just the idea behind it it's more practical in my opinion which is both of them though by the way can be reverse grip if that's really what you like and want to go for I do sell this in a very karambit style like curve blade in case that's what you're into they do sell one like that this is a knife that i was gifted it's another D2. This thing's fun to throw. It features a handmade leather holster and a wooden handle securing the thick D2 mill full tang blade. Designed and grooved for heavy use such as batoning. Look at that nice 
spine that it has. It's got like this, this jimping here and all those serrations. I've used this to baton just as just like my cold steel leather neck. They're both excellent knives. As you can see, this one's getting a little bit of surface rust. So I'll have to polish this guy and re-oil him. Probably should oil, make oil out the leather inside here. Keep it nice. But uh, yeah, here's that. Here's another handmade knife. This was another gift to me. It's uh, really beautiful. Check it out. So yeah, it is a pocket knife. If you don't know what the mess of steel is, it's basically the result of hours and hours of forging. This particular knife was folded five times, starting from nine layers of 1095, 15, and 20, giving approximately 312 layers, making up for this beautiful pattern. It features detailed hand grinds, file brass liners, with the handle made of sheep horn and car uh, camel bone, fastened with brass pins. Top quality, extra thick, lower sheath. Leather sheath is hand tooled and sewn. Overall length is 7.4 inches and the blade is 3.2 inches. Get a closer shot of that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this content or if you just want to support a fellow patriot, like, subscribe. I'm out. God bless you.